just a dinosaur I don't know what I'm for I like to stop and go Hey, I'm just a dinosaur! It's okay. I've recovered. Mostly. So, as we begin part two, the Jabberwocky disappears after a few seconds, so we might as well move ahead to Alice finding the chess pieces she knocked over. There's no way I can take that face seriously. <laughs> Nor that one. <laughs> Please don't make such faces. <laughs> You're making me laugh so hard I can only hold you. See? Even the movie can't take them seriously. Alice is then offered info on the monster she just encountered by the Owl, played by Jack Warden. Hmm, Jack Warden. What's he been in? No. No! He was in 12 Angry Men?! I don't know about the rest of them, but I'm getting a little tired of this yakety yakking back and forth. It's getting us nowhere. What the- No! No! How could anybody from 12 Angry Men, which has some of the most dignity of any movie ever made, end up in... this? Just... No! No, 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 no! No! Not as big as Ringo, but still. No! Your fears gave birth to it. As long as you have those fears inside you, Alice, the Jabberwocky may come for you at any time. When you overcome the great fear in you, then and only then will you be able to stop the frightening appearances of the Jabberwocky and return to your family. But how? Only you know the answer to that. I don't know. If I knew, I would tell myself. And you don't care, or you'd tell me. You really would. Oh, but I do care. And you will see that all the creatures in Looking Glass Land care. Why should they? Because when the fear of you creates the Jabberwocky, it is dangerous for all of us around here. So basically, Alice, everyone in the land is screwed because of you. Good job. After an encounter with some talking flowers, Feed me, Crabbon! Feed me now! Alice meets up with the Red Queen, who shows her that the world they're in is a giant chessboard. One of the White Queen's little brats is too young to play, so you'll have to take a place. You'll be a pawn, which will start you in the second square of the board, naturally. When you're a queen, you may go home. But you said I was only going to be a pawn. That's quite correct. But when you reach the eighth square of the chessboard, then, then you'll be a queen and then you may go home. Hurry! We'll miss everything! Hurry where? I'll show you! The Red Queen takes Alice further along via a cheesy blue screen effect and leaves her just as an obviously miniature train approaches. <laughs> This train scene, it, it deserves its own section of the review just for the material it offers. Ticket, 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 ticket. That. Show your ticket. I'm afraid I haven't got one. There wasn't a ticket office where I came from. No excuses, please. So why do you let her stay on? Ticket, 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 ticket. That again. The conductor is Merv Griffin, the goat is Patrick Duffy, the man in the paper suit is Steve Allen, who also wrote the songs for this movie, and the horse is Mr. Miyagi. Yes, that Mr. Miyagi. Wax on, wax off. Well, if witches were horses, beggars would ride. That's an old expression. Here's another old expression. Ah, <laughs> uh, that type of comedy. <laughs> Thank you for that, Pat Morita. Of course, that is the actor's name. It's not really Mr. Miyagi. That would be just kind of weird. Uh, I really think I should call an emergency cord. Yeah, there isn't an emergency.
emergency cord. There's not even a non-emergency cord. The only thing you can pull around here is your own weight. That's what you think. Yeah. 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 Well, I must say. Who stopped the train? How does that work? And who was it running away from? That's a silly question. And you're a silly girl. And you're a silly Billy, goat. Not your goat, that's very good. I'm going to write that down on paper. <laughs> okay, I'd say that qualifies as genuinely funny. She almost ruined my lunch. <laughs> Nothing like goat eating habits humor. Now back to the plot. Hello. Is it me, or does this guy seem like another potential pedo? You look like a very nice person. A very, very nice person. You know, if you get sweaty and want to take your shirt off, that'd be just fine. After that encounter, Alice runs into Tweedledee and Tweedledum, played by husband and wife duo Edie Gourmet and Steve Lawrence. After a song about good introductory manners, including this questionable moment, they sing and show her the story of the walrus and the carpenter. Now, I've been at this review for a while. I'm getting a little thirsty. Thank you, Thing. Are you all right, Thing? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I can tell you're in great pain. I, I was just concerned about you. <laughs> we all know this story. The walrus and the carpenter trick a bunch of oysters. Fine. Before we have our chat. Or whatever these things are. And to going off with them, and then the duo eats all of them. <laughs> This version adds a little something at the end, however. Okay, if that's what you prefer, that's fine with me. Alice leaves the story and meets the White Queen from earlier, played by Carol Channing. Of course, Carol Channing's in this. Oh! Shut up. You should have a lady's maid. I'll take you with pleasure. Tuppence a week, and jam every other day. I don't want you to hire me, and I don't care for jam. Yeah, I mean, have you seen what jam does to radars? The rule is, jam tomorrow, jam yesterday, but never jam today. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Do you think you could try to uh, explain it a little more? Jane tomorrow, Jane yesterday, but never ever Jane today. I said, Jane tomorrow, Jane yesterday, but never ever Jane today. You can wish as you want, you can want as you wish. Still, you better hear me say, Jane tomorrow, Jane yesterday, but never ever Jane I think someone today. broke Carol Tanny. What sort of things do you remember best? Things that happened the week after next. Ah! My fingers bleeding. Ah! Ah! Silly shrieking aside, you may be wondering how her finger can be bleeding when nothing has happened to it. Actually, it's explained that she knows the future and that the bleeding finger will happen soon. And it does. This movie explaining an odd moment? How... odd. How old are you? Seven and a half exactly. I'm just one hundred and one. I can't believe that. I can. I hope your finger's better now. Better. Much better. Better. 
No comment. Hold your tongue!